Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome fingerstyle lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how you can play some cool fingerstyle funk. And this is based on one simple rhythm and adding extra licks on top of it uh, to your own uh, preference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you everything that I'm doing and then you're gonna take it and build your own um, your own interpretation according to your own style. So I'm borrowing a fret, and preferably a high fret. Nine, eight, seven, anything that gives us the high notes, right? To get the, the funky feel. Now, the best choice is 10, 11, 12, but since we're playing uh, finger style, if we're borrowing 10, 11, 12, then we're not getting the right bassy bass string. Um, we want to keep it to seven or nine to still have that bass feel. So I'm borrowing seven <clears throat> and I'm playing this. Okay, this is my basic rhythm. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, now we're playing the bass. Then I start adding the chord in. Okay, so as an intro, you can play uh, muted strings. Okay, and then add okay, strings two, three, and four, or one, two, and three. So, and start creating your own interpretation of that rhythm. Add notes in between. Okay. Now, uh, I forgot to mention, I'm putting nine on the fifth string. Okay? I'm not just barring, I'm putting 9 on the 5th string, this creates a minor 7 chord, B minor 7, um, just in case I accidentally play the 5th string. Now um, we're going to use it as a lick later on, 7 to 9, okay? you can use it now if you like, um, and see how that works. Now experiment with uh, off beats, with beats, with uh, different interpretations, with different strings. See what you can get out of the beat alone. Okay, bum 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 bum. You have a lot of silence in between the, that you can fill in however you like. Then I'm starting to add uh, little solos. So uh, I can add nine on the E string. This creates add nine sound, okay, so seven and nine, all right? And then I can also use 10, all right, for the minor. All right? and I'm arpeggiating in between or playing the chord. So it sounds like I'm doing a lot simultaneously, but basically it's one chord. Just keep in mind, it's one chord, we're still not moving anywhere, so. Okay, just try different things. Uh, if it uh, throws, you, uh, throws you off, just keep playing and you'll just get back into the rhythm. So, um, I'm just thinking of uh, giving you as many examples as I can. And uh, basically, okay, very, very small licks, just adding uh, an extra feel to the funk rhythm. And after you're done with the first string, try the same thing with the second string. Okay, this gives us the Dorian feel. Um, if you don't know what a Dorian scale is, doesn't matter, just listen to it, and it's more important that you know how it sounds. Uh, than what it is theoretically. Just get it in your ear. Okay, exactly the same idea. Okay, and when I'm playing uh, soloing on the second string, I'm playing strings two, three, and four as my chord. 
Okay? You can do strings one, two, and three in solo on the second string, but that gives it, gives it a different atmosphere, it gives it kind of a different color. Okay, see, it gives it uh, a chordy sort of sound, and you don't want... Okay, um, it's not supposed to be um, different chord colors. It's supposed to be one chord okay, with extra soloing licks. And the way to do that is to always have the solo on top of the chord. So when you're playing the solos on the second string, it's preferable to play strings two, three, and four as your chord. Okay. Now we're on to strings three and four. You have seven and nine on both. Okay. And if you want the blues sound, you can use 10 on the third string, but I suggest you try the natural sound first. So. Okay. And try to see how you can uh, manipulate that while playing strings three and four as your chord. So I prefer to play strings three, four, and six and add the uh, fifth string somewhere in the middle there with seven hammer on to nine. So if you want okay, to play the 10 on the third string, be my guest, but just know that it'll turn it into a bit of a bluesy color. So you need to keep it funky. Just continue playing the seven and nine and add 10 as an extra, extra, extra note. Okay, so I don't know what I meant by that, but we're talking about music and everything we say is secondary to the music itself. So let's listen to all three strings. The, the 10 here on the third string kind of changes the color, the, the intent of, um, of, of the, funky, the funky feel that we're going for. Again, it's really difficult to explain something that you're supposed to hear, but I think that the bluesy note uh, doesn't fit in here. Um, but again, that's just what I feel right now in the moment. I might play this tomorrow and think differently. Now, um, we're done with the scale. Okay. And as I told you, you can use the, the, the seven hammer on to nine on the fifth string. I'm trying to think whether I've missed something that I can, that I can show you. But uh, I think I've covered it all. Um, it's supposed to be basic. This is supposed to be a uh, creativity exercise. Now, if you want to move the chord around, you have two choices. You can uh, play okay, the 777 on strengths two, three, and four. It's all inside the Dorian scale that I showed you because you have the seven on the second string. So you can play all three. Okay, and then you get the... Um, the one for one. Okay. And try to find as many ways as you can to add that chord in. And by as many ways as you can, I mean rhythmically. I tried to demonstrate it right now and it wasn't very creative what I did. I was just playing E and B minor seven but in different uh, rhythmical uh, interpretations. Okay, try to see how many ways, how many, how many rhythmical interpretations you can squeeze out of these two chords. The next, um, the next uh, chordal idea here, um, because we need to keep it simple, is to uh, move the chord chromatically. And you can do it either from a fret or two up, okay, or a fret or two down, okay? 
You can also go crazy. Okay? But this is beyond the scope of this lesson. We're trying to keep it funky and simple. So you have five, six, seven, and nine, eight, seven. You don't have to use all of them, mind you. See, if you use too much uh, chromatic movement, it loses the magic. It becomes um, tardy. And um, it's supposed to be a surprise. Just keep soloing and surprise yourself with a chromatic chord. I was trying to demonstrate how much is too much. I started by a good example and then I destroyed it. So you see, there's such a thing as too much, uh, too much sophistication. You don't have to be sophisticated to play well. You have to play melodically. And to play melodically, you just have to add an extra special note in there every now and then, like the blue note the 10 on the third string, um, or the chromatic feel. So I'll try to give you one last example and try not to repeat anything that I played before, which would be a challenge. So I'll try to give you a new, um, new interpretation. What I did was um, another way to interpret this uh, rhythmically to utilize the fact that we're playing finger style. I played the high notes and then the bass notes. I didn't play everything together this time. I played okay, for example I played E but without any bass note then I went back to the bass notes and at the beginning there I played the chromatics but only the bass notes. Okay? And you can actually have a lot of fun with that as well. Okay? Don't know what I did there, but um, it was a five hammer on to seven, pull off to five slide to seven. Okay? Back to so. Okay? The options aren't endless. But if you push yourself to try new rhythmical approaches every time you play it, you might discover that this is a lot, um, a lot deeper than you think. Uh, you can do a lot with just a few chords and a few notes. So I'll leave you to that. Uh, in the meantime, you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't know why you shouldn't because there's plenty of free lessons over here and I'll see you the next free lesson. So thank you very much for watching. Bye for now, enjoy.